Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. I just finished for my second time, it should definitely be noted that this is my second time watching this series, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 1. This is a six episode mini-series directed entirely by Deborah Chow. It returns um, Edwin McGregor and Hayden Christensen to the screen. And uh, it's a series that I both love and hate, and I think most reasonable Star Wars fans, you know, Star Wars fans are a little bit cuckoo here and there. Um, they usually just defend everything by default. But if you're capable of critique and, you know, you have more than like, okay, that's a bit mean, I'm not going to finish that sentence, but yeah. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say is, I, you know, I like the series and I don't fault anyone else for liking it, but like if we're going to pretend this is some master class best thing ever created, you're, you're, you're wrong. You know, you're straight up wrong. It's not even opinion related. That's just, you are absolutely wrong. Um, so in this series, we're following, and there's going to be some spoilers, by the way. We're following Obi-Wan, who prefers to be called Ben now. He is watching over Luke, um, and, uh, like Luke Skywalker on Tatooine. And he's lost his, uh, his affinity to the Force, not too badly, but just you know, he's less of a prime Jedi warrior like he was back in the day. Um, and all, I just want to point out right now, that actually doesn't make sense, the fact that he's lost his affinity with the Force and hasn't been using a saber, because he himself has said in this series that he's going to be uh, training Luke when he's of age, right? So, yeah. So that doesn't make sense. But there's a lot worse things than that, so that one I don't really care about. Uh, so, but then Princess Leia, who's extremely young in this series, almost too young. I think she's kind of like a toddler in this, and she, as an actor, I've actually, I haven't met her, um, but I, I've actually seen the actor for Leia in person, and I stood away from like 10 feet from her, and when I was standing there at her, like her autograph booth, while well, I was at the one beside it, uh, she was like picking her nose and like couldn't pay attention, so she's like an actual child, you know? So <laughs> I just wanted to mention that not only have I met this, well, seen this person, but um, I, I think they were, yeah, no. They, they were too young, way too young for this series. So the very young Leia, um, she's got her childish shenanigans going on in her life, um, for lack of better words, and uh, she gets captured and kidnapped in this ridiculous forest chase scene. And um, then uh, Bail Organa pleads with Obi-Wan and eventually convinces him to go and rescue Leia because Leia's always a damsel in distress, right? I guess. No, but yeah. I, there's a, that's actually a pretty large bug. I don't like that. Um, but uh, I actually think it's kind of funny that they made Leia a damsel in distress second time in this in this uh, universe so especially given the climate and all that so that was kind of strange um, so it's an escort mission basically is what this series is it's Obi-Wan defending Leia from anyone who wants to hurt her and then we also have Darth Vader returning who is completely obsessed and cuckoo with uh, capturing Obi-Wan at any and all costs that is the only thing he cares about um, and we also learn about the Grand Inquisitor who most of us have seen before, but it's like their live action debut. And one of the more important ones is named Reva, the third sister, who is trying to also equally obsess as Vader with getting Kenobi because she wants to deliver Kenobi to Vader so that Vader will promote her to the new Grand Inquisitor. Um, because all, well, they're not Sith, right? But all dark, all force users that are bad on the dark side, all dark side force users want power. That's always what they want. Um, and then if we get to spoiler territory, the truth is, um, unfortunately, I don't like this either, unfortunately, uh, Reva straight up copies Trilla Saduri, Saduri, the second sister from the video game, canonical video game, Jedi Fallen Order, which normally I don't care about outside sources, they don't usually affect stuff like this, but it's a video game that literally everyone has played. It's the only canon Star Wars game, I believe, other than Battlefront 2's campaign, so everyone has played this game, pretty much. But I guess Deborah Chow didn't play it because Reva literally copies Trilla one for one. She goes the generic, sort of predictable, turning to good path. She wants revenge on Vader. Um, so, yeah. Very mixed series. So, what do I like about it? Well, I like, obviously, I like, I just, I love the excuse. I love that there's an excuse for these two 
to get back onto the screen with each other, okay? Obviously, I'm not gonna like be a party pooper over that. I'm a, I'm a Hayden fan for sure. I think he's kind of annoying in Attack of the Clones, but in Revenge of the Sith, he's my single favorite character in this entire franchise. So it's kind of interesting the polarity. Like in Attack of the Clones, one of my least favorite characters, in Revenge of the Sith, pro yeah, my number one favorite by far. Um, so just having an excuse to have Hayden Christensen return, put him in the Darth Vader suit, actually have him be Vader. He doesn't need, you know, there's nobody swapping out to choreograph or like uh, to stunt for him. He's more than capable of doing his own saber fights. So actually seeing him become Vader, well, you don't really see his face, but you know, you know what I mean, right? He gets to be in the suit, actually fight for himself and become the character that he was destined to be, right? So that's really cool. Uh, there's a lot of fan service in this. And I, I mean, again, I'm not going to be a party pooper in the fan service. More spoilers here. Qui-Gon Jinn, hello there. Um, you get a name drop of Quinlan Voss. There's a lot of, like, references to other stuff. We get, um, we get a scene of Anakin with his little, um, ponytail look. Uh, so you get to see, I, th I think that's Attack of the, or maybe between Attack of the Clones. I think we see a post-Attack of the Clones pre-Revenge of the Sith version of Anakin in like a, a pretty extended uh, past scene. We get plenty of uh, lots of prequel content in general. Prequel is of course the most interesting time period of Star Wars history in canon. I'm sure many people would argue Old Republic is, but that's not canon. Um, and I only care about canon stuff personally, so I don't really know a lot about Old Republic, but as far as canon goes, prequels are obviously the most interesting time period in this franchise's history. So getting an excuse to explore more of that is always very nice. The music is goosebump inducing, it's extremely good, um, and the acting's very strong, except for, uh, Leia, obviously, but I mean, she's a child, so I'm not gonna hold it against her, but... Yeah, um, so why, why is this series so mixed? Because I do want to preface it, I do like it, but I barely like it. Just in the same way I barely like The Phantom Menace and I barely like Attack of the Clones. This is the same story. I barely like this, you know? I don't hate it, it's just, it, it could have been so much more. To me it comes off, I mean, it's not even coming off, this is just what it is, right? I don't think a lot of people would argue against me on this point. I think this series is not trying to be some amazing series that will impress anyone. I think it's trying to basically cash in on fan favorite characters and get people to subscribe to Disney Plus. That's that's what it is. So, yeah, but other than real world Disney stuff, um, the there's a lot of stupid moments in here. That's probably my number one issue was the stupid moments. So let's go over all stupid moments, or at least the ones that I care about. So the forest scene. The reason that forest running away scene is terrible is because Leia is like, yeah, Leia's 10 years old in this. She has these tiny little pathetic legs of hers that she can barely run five miles an hour at. You know, it's like she's just, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it, lo it looks like she's just walking for the first time every time she tries to move her body in this, right? It's like a child run. So the reason that scene sucks is because she has a gang of bounty hunters chasing after her and they'll do like these comical kind of like a tree branch will get in their way and they'll be like, ah, oh, you foiled me. It is one, of, it might be the single worst uh, scene in all of Star Wars actually. Um, not comparing it to other bad scenes like Last Jedi stuff, but like in the terms of actual like poorly filmed things. It's a very, very poor quality, terrible scene. That it's even worse than like if someone tried to make a uh, YouTube fan of it, you know, and they were throwing on some cosplays and costumes and stuff. It's worse than that. So that scene was terrible. Luckily, it's it's over relatively quickly. Um, and then we also have so Vader. I hate this. Okay, so Vader lets Obi Wan live because there's a little puddle of fire between them. You know, he can't just simply walk around or force pull him or extinguish the flames like he did just two seconds ago. He lets Obi-Wan walk away because, again, so the crazy fans, I, I'm a fan, right? But like the crazy fans who are, lives are devoted to Star Wars, they will say, they will always come up with excuses for this kind of stuff. And I'll tell you right now, they'll say things, I assume what they would say to counter this is, um, Vader's feeling conflicted, you know, maybe he does, you know, his, his emotions are changing so rapidly. Okay, fair enough, but I personally don't go out of my way to try and excuse all of these terrible scenes in media like this, and it's not even, it's not even alluded to that that's a possible thing. That's pure fantasy. That is just you making your, making your own excuse for it. The reason I'm getting annoyed right now is because 
I've been uh, debating the first three episodes of Ahsoka with people, and they're fucking insane. Like, they are actually, like, they will not take no for an answer. They will excuse absolutely everything and say that it's the best thing ever created, and if you don't like it, then you're a piece of shit, and you should just stop watching it, and you should unsubscribe. Well, I paid for a product, and I'm going to form my own opinion on it. You know, especially if I'm making my own video like this right now, you know, if you're the one coming to me to shit on my opinion just because I don't like something. So, some of these... I went to Star Wars Celebration in real life, and the fans there, real people, real Star Wars fans in real life are good people, but these these annoying internet keyboard warriors that probably don't even care that much about Star Wars, they're probably just excusing everything because they're excited, right? So, yeah, I just... it's so annoying. Basically, Vader, Vader lets Obi-Wan get away several times, and he, he shouldn't have, because there's no logical reason for it. Um, another issue is Bail Organa. Um, he makes a video holographic transmission to Obi-Wan that's very easy for bad guys to get access to, by the way. Um, he basically says, in this transmission, he says, Hey, Obi-Wan, um, so what about Luke and Owen Lars on Tatooine, you know, like the, the spaceport there? Are you, gonna, are you going back there? I forget what he says exactly, but he name drops Luke, um, Owen, and Tatooine. That is all the clues the Empire will ever need to go locate Luke, so. More stupidity. Um, so, I, I, did I talk about this already? I think I did. So, Reva. Reva's an issue in this series. Not for the re- I don't know. I think I like Reva more than most people, but I still will concede that she is an issue. Um, but my, my only point for Reva, I think she's fine for the first five episodes, and in that sixth episode, the ball gets dropped, and, uh, yeah. She just completely copies second sister. I mean, her name's literally third sister, and she copycats second sister one for one copy, because I don't think Deborah Chow played Jedi Fallen Order. So, that is an issue. Um, the very predictable turn to good, don't like it. I don't, yeah, I don't like that at all. I'd rather her die, to be honest, you know. So... That sounded, that sounded brutal. It's funny how we are so desensitized to death. Actually, on the topic of death and desensitized, another thing that I didn't like in the series was, um, so when stormtroopers get killed in this by lasers, for some reason, I don't know why it's like this, there probably is a reason for this, but I don't know what it is, so I'd be very interested in if someone knows. Why can a stormtrooper fall on a laser gate and be split in half, but if a lightsaber goes in goes, like, half of them, they, they can't be cut in half. So why can't Stormtrooper limbs be cut off with lightsabers, but they can be cut off through other means? There's actually quite a lot of death in this. This is a darker series than you'd expect at first. You're just like, there's, like, a body hanging, you know, there's tons of imagery that, like, Jedi are, um, you know, to be crucified, so... Yeah, Obi-Wan. I want to give this series a four, but I'm actually going to give it a five. I think it earns the five just because of James Earl Jones voicing Vader, um, Hayden Christensen, every scene involving him was 10 out of 10, uh, even though he does look a bit older. Uh, Edwin McGregor, awesome. We get a lot of fan service. The music was stellar. The action was not that good, to be honest, um, so I don't want to praise that. The reason it wasn't that good is because there are budgetary restrictions. So their camera guy will like be running around like they're holding like a GoPro or something as opposed to like proper studio sort of on the rails cinematic shots. Um, so the action wasn't that great, but it was okay. And um, I think the number one, my number one favorite thing about the series is uh, Hayden Christensen's voice malfunctioning in the Vader suit at the climax. I want to bring specific attention to that. that. That scene alone might be my new favorite scene in all of Star Wars, and that's not an exaggeration. Basically, if you don't know what happens, Vader's helmet gets cut in half, and he tries. He starts speaking to Obi Wan on his last leg, and it switches between James Earl Jones's voice and Hayden Christensen's voice. And I've never seen this before. It's super cool. The fact that like he's half machine, half human, it really shows. Because I never really thought of Vader as a true machine in the original trilogy or anything, but um, he really does come off as like a. A husk of a man, no arms, no legs, half a face at this point. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Actually, that reminds me, I want to talk about one more negative thing before we wrap up this video, and I do need to be quick because someone's about to pick me up in 14 minutes. This series unfortunately changes, I wouldn't really use the word retcon, but it changes, it fundamentally changes some major and iconic scenes from the original trilogy. 
Um, two, two are the biggest ones though. I'm sure you know what these are. So first of all, Obi-Wan and Anakin have had their major um, confrontation before the events of A New Hope even happen. So in A New Hope, when Vader says, last time we met, you were the master, I was the apprentice. No, 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 that's not how it was. Last time you met, Obi-Wan was an old man on an escort mission and you were at your peak power potential. In fact, you're weaker in A New Hope than you are here. So, or at least maybe not canonically, but like as far as on the screen. So that's an issue. But the, actually the one that's worse and more weird to me is, so Leia and, and Obi-Wan have a very close relationship. I mean, there's a 20 second scene of just them holding hands and caressing each other's hands. They have formed a bond at this point. They are, she even asked Obi-Wan if she's her father at one point in this, in this series. So they are very good friends and they are very close to each other. So the iconic scene, help me Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope from A New Hope, has now been changed or adjusted to be a little bit weirder because it doesn't make sense that uh, Leia would address him so formally. Uh, I believe, how does, how does she say it in A New Hope? She says, um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you, you used to serve my father in the Clone Wars. And she speaks to him as if she's never met him before. Um, and Obi-Wan never once says to Luke or anyone else, oh yeah, Leia and I are friends. So that kind of, that's a pretty major change to make. Um, but obviously, like George Lucas, when he made A New Hope, he was not planning this far ahead. So yes, yeah, stuff like that is going to happen, but I did want to mention it. So we're going to give it a generous 5 out of 10. And anyone who goes higher than seven. So anyone who goes seven out of 10 or higher, you need to watch some more shows and uh, get your scale right because this is not top tier quality, uh, especially not for Disney, Star Wars, and the budgets they have. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.